the last but by no means the least of our distinguished guests who was very busy this uh, two days in, in, in another event, uh, Dr. Pronario, who is the uh, chairman of uh, UN COPOS, uh, and he has been our supporter and friend for uh, his term in COPOS and continued the tradition of uh, uh, really giving us a lot of advice and support uh, in, in what we do and uh, always uh, being uh, a, a kind friend uh, who, who always shares a smile and uh, shares uh, his busy time with us. And, and now he is going to conclude uh, our series of uh, guest, guest speeches. Okay. Thank you very much, Katrin. So I'm not the first time here in front of you. I'm the second time because last year I was first. And uh, as long as uh, my position is uh, connected with uh, the international organizations and uh, less now with the Romanian space program, let's say, I want to share you some opinions about uh, the United Nations, the involvement in, of the United Nations in uh, space research and uh, also about the involvement of specific type of space institutions and some problems they rise and you could find some ideas to, to be involved in. Uh, sharing opinions about the present and future perspectives of uh, so dynamic and promising field of activity as spaces with young specialists and future leaders of space activities uh, programs or institution, it's a big challenge and also a demanding responsibility. I was fortunate to fly into space uh, 30 years ago, accomplishing a scientific mission on board of Salyut 6 space station, 20 years after Yuri Gagarin did it first in the world, and exactly one month after the space shuttle flew into space. And this valuable ex experience I had changed my vision and approach on global issues making me pay a specific attention to the protection of our planet Earth and to helping global and regional development through space applications. During the last century, we have reached new levels of science, technology, industry, economical and social development, but in the same time, radically changed the natural balance of the planet we live on. As a matter of fact, only after radical negative changes in our lives and existence, being natural or man-made disasters, wars, diseases, economical crashes, we had the strength and determination to create institutions, organizations to start protecting us against those negative changes and to start thinking how we could better improve at the planetary level our life on the long term. The foundation of the United Nations was a necessity for the human society to deal with global problems. The organization is committed to maintaining international peace and security, developing friendly relations among nations and promoting social progress, better living standards and human rights. Due to its unique international character and the powers vested in its founding charter, the organization can take action on a wide range of issues and provide a forum for its 192 member states to express their views through the General Assembly, the Security Council, the Economic and Social Council, and other bodies and committees. Outer space is an inseparable part of our existence and activity, and it was a necessity, the creation of a specialized body to deal with at the level of the United Nations. As chairman of COP was the only UN committee dealing with peaceful uses of outer space, I'd like to inform you about some of the topics we approach within the committee and its subcommittees. First, we have a United Nations program on space applications. We discuss how to improve this program and make it available for more and more people, especially from developing countries. Until now, we had three United Nations conferences on the exploration and peaceful uses of outer space. 
the recommendations of the third one, Unispace 3, which was organized in Vienna in 1999, are representing the main directions of the action of the committee. We discuss also matters relating to remote sensing of the Earth by satellites, including applications for developing countries and monitoring of the Earth's environment. Space debris is also an issue under a permanent analysis and discussions within COPUS, and specific guidelines in this respect for member states were elaborated. Space system-based disaster management support is offered to all member states. The United Nations Platform for Space-Based Information for Disaster Management and Emergency Response, UN SPIDER, represents the most relevant contribution of the UN in helping member states to deal with the management of a disaster in all its phases. Recent developments in global navigation satellite systems are also approached by our UN committee. The use of nuclear power sources in outer space is regulated by specific guidelines adopted within the committee. Near-Earth objects represent a threat for Earth from its origins. In the framework of the UN, we try now not only to analyze the physical nature of those objects, but also to promote the organization of specific international institutions to deal with this problem. International Space Weather Initiative it's a quite new introduced topic. The influence of the solar eruptions on space and earth technologies and on human life is essential. A controversial item on which we succeeded to reach a consensus a few months ago is the long-term sustainability of outer space activities. Another long discussed item is the examination of the physical nature and technical attributes of the geostationary orbit and its utilization and applications, including in the field of space communications, as well as other questions relating to development in space communications, taking particular, into particular account of the needs and interests of developing countries without prejudice to the role of the International Telecommunications Union. You see how long is this topic and how complex. It's also in, uh, in the discussions of different member states. Within the full committee, we analyze the ways and means of maintaining outer space for peaceful purposes. The implementations of the recommendations of the Third United Nations Conference on the exploration and peaceful uses of outer space are representing also an important topic. Spin-off benefits of space technology and the current status, it's an item permanently reviewed. We discuss also about space and society, space and water, space and climate change, use of space technology in the United Nations system, and about the future role of the committee. It is important the fact that the main space treaties and agreements were negotiated in the framework of COPOS and its subcommittees and submitted for the adoption to the UN General Assembly. All these problems of humanity dealing with outer space are discussed and solved by member states represented by their skilled official representatives. Not only member states, but also international non-governmental or intergovernmental organizations take part in the debates. I want to congratulate here your organization, the Space Generation Advisory Council, in support of the UN program on space applications and especially Ariane Agnieszka for pushing efficiently your implication and ideas in solving global problems at the level of the UN. Most of the UN member states have their own space organizations, space programs, and are developing in accordance with specific interests. Space systems are strategic assets demonstrating independence in the ready and the readiness uh, to assume global responsibilities. Initially developed as defense or scientific projects, they now also provide commercial infrastructures on which important sectors of the economy depend and which are relevant in the daily life of citizens. However, the space sector is confronted with high technological and financial risks and requires strategic investment decisions. The space sector is a driver 
and enabler for the partnership for growth and jobs. Space is an about 90 billion market worldwide, growing at 7% per annum. By instance, only in Europe, the European companies secure 40% of the commercial markets for satellite manufacturing, launch and satellite services. Space also offers great scope for high technology innovation in selected areas, opening the possibility for the development of lead markets. The main concern and focus is of most space nations or international space organizations dealing with the peaceful utilization of outer space are connected with the necessities of meeting the challenges of the 21st century when space already affects everyday life even more intimately than before and human activity will spread more widely into the solar system. The competitiveness in high technology is a demand for a space nation, but not only for it. In most such nations or space organizations, space technology ranks alongside aeronautical engineering, computer applications and even biological technology as an advanced industrial skill of the kind that entity should cultivate if it is, it is to prosper in an increasingly competitive world. The support for pre-competitive innovation in space applications could be crucial for the development of the space industry in different countries. Special stimuli for high technology are necessary for promoting new discoveries that repeatedly pushes technology to the limit in daring ventures never attempted before. The existence of weightlessness. It's a condition for pushing research much farther than it could develop on ground. Microgravity experiments enable scientists to make discoveries or novel products in weightless conditions. The weird sides when materials and living things feel no force of gravity are familiar in pictures from space. The round balls of water wander like gas balloons and astronauts float in an invisible pool. Interesting for scientific, industrial and medical researchers is that crystals from form more perfectly, fluids flow undiverted by convection and cultured organisms and tissues grow differently from their cousins on the ground. The International Space Station, the largest since now international cooperation project, supports thousands of microgravity projects and experiments. As a consequence, for free developing space activities and applications, the access to space is one of the main demands for all space nations. Access to space enables nations' credential as space-faring powers able to join international projects as equal partners and to speak influentially about the lawful uses of space. A nation having access to space could offer its scientists and technologists the opportunity to pursue their own ideas and inventions without deferring to decision makers in other parts of the world. In the same time, by fostering global cooperation, we could promote peace in space. For some nations or space organizations, the independence in applications looks to be essential. By instance, the European Galileo satellite system meets a perceived need for Europe's own space navigation systems. China, by instance, does the same thing. Also, Europe's remote sensing experiments and uh, environmental scientists have been able to put onto their earth-watching satellites the instruments that they, the best reflect their ideas, skills and priorities for tackling global environment issues, as well as building satellites for telecommunications and broadcasting has become big business for the airspace industry. Space is solving not just research and applications problems, but also economic and social problems. The creation of new jobs is one of the social consequences of the development of space activities. Fostered mainly by public funds, only in Europe by instance, so I come from Europe, it's 
that's the reason I give you examples from Europe. Space industries already employ 40,000 men and women. Indirect employment is estimated at 250,000. And these numbers can only increase as the applications of space technology spread wider. In the beginning of space applications for the society, a better weather forecasts and satellite TV improved the quality of life of the population. On the way came smarter personal communications and sure space navigation. Healthcare, learning, transport systems, disaster relief, and search and rescue operations all benefit from space systems and represent a real improvement of the quality of life on Earth. Now new science programs are to give early warning of solar storms that can disrupt power suppliers and communications. Earth watching programs make major contributions to the effort to detect pollution and monitor environment and climatic changes. And for sure, safeguarding the environment is fundamental to the quality of life. Research and education are of the most profiting areas benefiting from space activities. By serving science, space science laboratories and astronomical institutes, different nations pro national programs prevent a lot of talented individuals to other continents and sustain the quality of university physics teaching by instance. PhD students working on space missions often go on to quite different careers in industry or commerce, fortified by exceptional experience of a time urgent, cutting edge, multinational project. Space brings also cultural benefits. Space science and manned space flight push back the frontiers of knowledge and help to reunify the physical, biological and earth sciences. Young people excited by space exploration may be attracted into careers in science and engineering and almost everyone wonders about his or her place among the stars. In the constellation of values of most of the societies today, freedom, admiration for philosophical, artistic and practical skills and respect for the environment, unceasing discovery plays a central part. Scientists share their cosmic discoveries with school teachers, the media and the general public in the worldwide cultural adventure. I hope I share with you a thoughtful understanding of what means space now and in the next future at international and national levels and it could help you in addressing space in a deeper and more wisely way. Thank you.